Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is Samsung Tizen Fail. If you haven't heard of Samsung's Tizen, it's a lesser known operating system that Samsung developed for its TVs, phones, and other smart type devices. It's loosely based on Linux and Android, so very similar to those operating systems. In a recent article, Motherboard interviewed a security researcher, Amihai Niederman, who claims to have found 40 zero-day vulnerabilities in Samsung's Tizen operating system, and he plans to disclose some of this research at Kaspersky Labs' upcoming Security Analyst Summit. Now, since he hasn't had his talk, Niederman hasn't disclosed the technical details about these flaws yet, but he has described their scope and impact. For instance, he describes the worst one as a flaw in the way the Samsung store does their updates. Basically, he can leverage this update mechanism to force any code on devices running this Samsung Tizen operating system. He also complains that the operating system suffers from a number of very basic buffer overflow flaws. At a very high level, a buffer overflow flaw is a type of programmatic mistake where if an attacker can force a program to put more input into memory than it's actually expecting to be in memory, it can cause the program to crash, but it can also give the attacker control of memory where he might be able to get control of the computer and load whatever code he wants. In any case, one of the most basic old school buffer overflow flaws was due to a very popular C function called string copy. At a base at basic level, string copy is a function programmers can use to take a user inputted string and copy it somewhere into memory. However, string copy, the old function, didn't really pay attention to how big that input was, so it was very prone to buffer overflow flaws. Now, for the longest time, there are more secure versions of things like string copy, like string n copy, which actually does pay attention to how big the user's input is and limits its copies to that. But apparently, Samsung is still still using this really well-known, badly designed function in their operating system code. Finally, Niederman also mentions a lot of uh, communication and encryption mistakes, like not using SSL for communications that should be secured. Now, without all the technical details, it is kind of unclear how bad this really is. I presume he will release some of those details once he gives this talk. In any case, I thought it was an interesting story. Be sure to check out the article if you're interested in more. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching. Thank you.